For this activity, you will need a piece of paper, a pencil, and some crayons. Start with a light colored crayon like yellow. Draw a big hill shape at the top of the paper and then another one right above it. There should be a little bit of space at the top of your paper above these lines. Make your lines really thick by coloring over them a few times. Next, draw vertical lines in between. These will be the rails of the bridge. Try to space them out so there's about the same amount in between each line. Next, we are going to use a pencil to draw some details. Right below the bridge, draw a straight line with the pencil. This is the water line. Towards the bottom, we're going to draw a water lily. Start with a teardrop shape. Add some petals on each side. These are overlapping. They look like they're behind the first petal that you drew. Then, in the back, draw the little tips of the other petals. These look kind of like mountain tops. Next, we're going to draw the lily pad. The lily pad is almost like an oval shape. Usually, you would think it would be a circle, but since we're looking at it from the side, it's more like an oval. Draw as many lily pads as you want. Try overlapping them so that they look like they're almost floating on top of each other. This will also make your drawing look more realistic. Closer to the water line under the bridge, the lily pads will be smaller. So as you move back, make your little ovals smaller and smaller. This will make it look like there is a lot of space in your drawing. These lily pads that are smaller will look farther away. When you are finished drawing with your pencil, you can set it aside and grab some crayons to work with. We won't be coloring in a regular kind of way. We will be adding little dashes of color, just like Monet does with his paint. I'm going to start with green for the lily pads. Add as many lines as you can. It's not important to fill in all of the white just yet. Once you are finished with your first green color, you can add lots of other green colors with more dashes and more lines. The more colors and the more lines that you add, the more impressionistic it will be like Claude Monet's paintings. It's okay if you go over your pencil lines. Claude Monet tried to work in a messy manner on purpose. For the flower, add layers of pink and yellow. Add layers of blue, green, purple, and pink for the water. The water reflected all different kinds of colors of things all around it. So Monet included all of these colors in his paintings of the water lilies.
you will notice some white left at the top. Add layers of green in this remaining space. These will be trees that are in the background. The last step is to use black or a dark color to add some shadows and defining lines. It's okay if it looks a little bit messy. I'm kind of coloring in my lines rather than drawing them really neatly. I'm going around my flower petals so that it stands out. I'm also going to add some black around the edges of the lily pads. I added a little where my waterline was and then under the bridge. Now you'll see that I'm making these seven shapes in between the rails. This will help the bridge stand out. I hope that you have fun making your own landscape inspired by Monet's Lily Garden.